you are familiar with alcohol inks at all, these are inks that are developed for specifically non-porous surfaces. They work on porous surfaces, so these will still work as a great fabric dye because they're permanent on contact. Uh, you can still use it as a wood stain and all of that, mm -hmm. but because they're so fast drying, that's really not their specialty because you can't ever distribute the color fast enough. So their specialty is more metal, glass, plastic, acrylic, uh, glossy paper, transparencies. So the colors themselves, I just have a little sampling of them. The colors in the alcohol ink line are all translucent, so you can see through them. So when you use them on glass or metal, you still get that great reflective property. Throughout the line, we've also added mixatives. Now mixatives, like mm -hmm. your metallics, your silver, gold, copper, pearl, these are opaque because these are pigment. Mm -hmm. um, this is all still solvent-based, so these will all adhere to the same surfaces, but these are see-through, these are not. So I found that when I was working with these, especially when I wanted to create more antique finishes, or when I wanted to work on darker surfaces, mm -hmm. um, having just translucent colors really limited me. I thought, okay, but well, we had the white pearl, which was right. great, but it was still always pearly. Mm -hmm. Like, we just need to do white, but we need to do um, a white alcoholic, and that was the biggest challenge. So that is really the release of the show. We did one color in the line and soak out, and that changes the dynamics of it. So I'll take you through and show you some techniques on using it. Hopefully that will kind of answer a few questions. Let me clean this up. This is Wendy's mess. <laughs> Yeah, you do it. It's the uh, first. Right. How do you know? I ask a dumb question. How yes. do you know when to use the belt as opposed to the belt foam? is only for alcohol ink. That's it. Only. It's the only time you use it. It's disposable. Okay. You never want to use this with an ink pad. It's not designed to absorb the ink. That's what the blending club is for. It's the same tool, so it's the same handle. Yeah. So if you have extra handles, it, it's going to be the exact same thing. But um, this is really designed because once you use this, you throw it away. Don't save it for an art project because you're going to make a little elephant or whatever. <laughs> How are you? No, but people, I get emails from people going, I'm saving on my phone, so I'm going to make an art quilt. I'm like, well, first of all, it would be flammable. And second of all, it's really going to smell. So, you know, alcohol ink has a smell. Throw it away. Throw it away. That, that's the whole thing. So, another cool thing to know about these inks is that the bottles themselves are designed to be left open. So if you're creating backgrounds or you're doing a class or you're doing a make and take, leave the bottles open. You'll notice right away when I open them, you'll see a little bit of ink right there, I'll show you in the yellow, that sits in the nib. It does that on all of those. And that keeps the air from going back into the bottle. Okay. That's why I did the lids black, so you don't have to match them up. Mm. And I know some people still try. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, the only ones you probably want to match up are going to be your metallics because mm -hmm. you'll see those. Those yeah. are opaque. And those are the ones that you always keep the lids on because every time you use this, you have to shake it up. There's a mixing ball in there because these are all pigments, including the new snow pack. So that's why it's always a good idea to keep the lid on there. So just want to get these ready. So these are all solvent inks, like I said, that work for surfaces. And now we have blending solution. And this, to me, the most important part of making this entire line work. I tell people blending solution is to alcohol ink what water is to watercolor. So this will allow you to thin out your colors, make them far more fluid, remove them completely. If you get alcohol ink on something that you don't want, even like your sweater, you can put blending solution right on there and it would remove the alcohol ink color. It would never bleach your fabric. You're flammable for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and you kind of need to know that. So if you like you clean, you know, don't go light the stove or something. You have to wait for that alcohol ink to flash off, but it won't damage your fabric at all. So it's good to know. It would have taken it off. You get it on your carpet. I mean, people use it for red no, wine and all those things. Just, yeah. I mean, it doesn't damage the fabric. You just have to know that it is a solvent, and until that solvent evaporates, you know, don't go like clean and want to go make dinner. No. It's a good start excuse. Start the barbecue. Yeah. Mm. Start the grill. Oh wait, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so that stuff is really, really important. So let me just take you through, and, and I'll do kind of a before and after, because if you don't see the difference in snow cap, you won't get the difference. So we're going to work on alcohol ink cardstock, which is also glossy cardstock. We package it now, calling it alcohol ink cardstock, because we thought that relayed a better message to the consumer. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term glossy paper, they assume it's glossy photo paper. Right. Totally different stuff. Uh, photo paper is emulsion-based. 
And when you put anything on it, it gets sucked right in, it won't do anything. This is a clay coated paper, so it's glossy on one side. So a lot of my samples, people are looking at in physics, they're like, what is this great smooth paper that almost feels like felt? It's the back of glossy. So just because it's glossy, it's also a really great smooth surface because it's softer, it doesn't have, yeah, go ahead. It doesn't have any of those harsh fibers on the back like regular milled paper. So you can use either side. For alcohol ink, we're gonna use the glossy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my inks, put them right into the felt, and I'm gonna give it a squeeze. And one of the important things if you haven't worked with alcohol ink much, is to remember that when you apply the color, you only want to apply the color one time on the felt. If you like to do little dots, every dot you do of that color, that's how many more times you're putting that color on the paper. Okay. So if you do like four dots of blue, you're putting four times the amount of blue that you would if you had one dot. Right. Even though it's less ink than maybe the big squirt of red, mm -hmm. it's still how many times it's hitting the paper. Right. So a lot of times people email me like, my colors never look like the ones you're doing. You know? It always looks brown or blue. And then I watch them ink the tool and they're like, dot, 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 and they'll write a letter. Or <laughs> in a color, it's like, put it in, you're done. You can always go back and add more of that color, but just when you do this, only want to do one. So here I'm going to go in with just a metallic mixative. I'm going to go with a little bit of gold. Now, the mixative, one dot of mixative is enough metallic for a 12 by 12 surface. Oh, that. Jeez, I've been using so when you like, <laughs> yeah. then you really like metallic yes. colors, right? Because when you're done with it, you're like, wow. She didn't know she did, but then I was like, oh, it's super shiny, and that's why. That's what it does. Okay. So here I'm just stamping the tool, I'm just moving this. This is covered in our nonstick craft sheet. Uh, we sell this sheet rolled up in a 15 by 18 size. We also mm, sell it by yeah. the foot. So it comes three feet wide. You can buy it as long as you want it to be as a continuous roll. So this is our base color. It's just our ink. Our ink is already dry on the paper. It dries in under 10 seconds on glossy. Then I'm going to go in and kind of work this a little bit. So here I'm going to go in with some blending solution. Put that right on there. So see if that was your shirt. It would have taken that color out just like that. The ones you threw away. Now I'm just going to stamp on top of this. So blending solution basically has three different features. Yes. I loved it. Yeah, I know you will. Um, blend, lighten, and remove color. That's really what it does. So if I want to blend these colors, I can do that. If I keep going, you can see already that it's lightened. If I continue to go, it'll even be lighter. So that's really a cool thing. Like let's say you have this uh, purple twilight, but you want to do a card that maybe is a really light pale lavender. When you put that on the tool, put a dot of that on top of it. Okay. Remember, it is to alcohol ink like water would be to watercolor. So if you ever want a watercolor and get a wash of color, you just add more water. You add more blending solution. So here I can just go in and the more layers you put on here, the more texture is going to build. And you can see the alcohol starts to spread out when it dries. So the longer you wait, the faster it dries and the more texture you get. And then obviously you could even shake some blending solution on. You get some really great pattern mm, effects. On right. it. And that's just a simple background. People go, what would you do with it? Well, you could stamp it, you could die cut, you could punch things out. You could do anything. And so then what I'm gonna do, the paper or product you put it on, it's like a shiny. It's a glossy cardstock. Okay. Yep. I didn't know. I so we call it alcohol ink cardstock. So it's really for alcohol inks, but you could right. use glossy card for a lot of different things. So here I'm gonna swipe this out. The large craft sheet sounds good in theory, but really, I know you're filming this. Uh, if you're a crafter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You could have a six foot table for all of your crafting goodness that you are going to create in this much space. Right. Because you have put so much stuff around you. So although your table is covered by this beautiful stuff, that ink will never touch over there. Ever. You will only work here. So, I work in a 12 by 12. Yeah, it's like, so the 15 by 18, that's a pretty good size space. I consider that like luxury, you know? If you can at least keep stuff off the craft sheet, you got a lot of room, you know? You consider yourself ahead of the game. But every show people come in and they're like, oh, I want this. I'm like, okay. All right. I know. So I'm, I, I'm with you. Sure. So here's what we're going to do on this one. I'm going to go in the same way, but I'm just going to show you when you add a little bit of white to it. So we are. So maybe you have just given it a little bit of time how it's changed. Yeah, and check it out. I mean, the cool thing is like when you tip it, you're going to see that little hit of gold the metallic on there. Yeah. yeah. At first I was scared. Oh, really? I think one of the biggest things really is that, um, when people use mixative, they tend to use too much. And it's, it's hard to take off because, remember, these are translucent, so you can get beautiful layering. 
these are opaque so once you put this on okay. you can't put anything over it it will always come to the top i mean mm -hmm. you could have gold and put four more layers of color that gold's always going to pop to the top uh, and it's going to work the same way with this because this is a mixative mm -hmm. so even though you really like snow cap white if you put too much white right. there you are you might as well not even start because that's what you'll get. You still have to keep that in mind. Yeah. It's a mixative, which means it's opaque. And right, and it's gonna always be the, the dominant factor here. So I'm just gonna put another piece of felt on there. I'm gonna go with my colors. Maybe I'll choose the same, maybe I won't. I'll try to stay pretty true to what I did. You never know. Put a little bit of love to a little brown. Okay. So we're gonna shake this one up too. And you gotta mix it up. Now this one I'm just gonna put a little bit bigger dot because I wanna show the white, but still only a dot. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna go too crazy. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I go kind of crazy with it now I know not to. And that, and <laughs> that you can just know that that's what you're going to get because yeah. like if no. I was going to make a Christmas card I may oh, want a lot of metallic yeah. I want a lot of bling and there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with using a lot of mixative you just have to know if you use it like right. you're using it because you want to use it not right. because you think you always have to put that much on so again on our glossy paper we're just going to go in now one of the cool things about snow cap right now is you can see right away your colors start to get a little milky mm -hmm. because we're basically creating a pastel mm -hmm. with this okay because this is our white okay. opaque Love so it. already it's getting very chalky which is wonderful because it creates these really cool <laughs> yeah. uh, subtle backgrounds again i'm going to go with my blending solution i'll start stamping this out and although this starts breaking it down it still creates that soft background. And what I love about this, and if you haven't used alcohol ink before, you can always go and introduce color. Mm -hmm. So even if here you're like, mm, you know what, I really want more lettuce to show up. Okay, just put that on the tool. Just remember to put a little dot of blending solution next to it, because that's gonna kind of pave the way to put that color in. So even though it didn't matter what color was there, alcohol ink will always put it in. But you can see how it already becomes part of the background, why? If you just put lettuce and stamped it, you would be stamping green polka dots. Because it's not putting it into the background, it's just putting it on top. So, remember this is, this could be like in a gallon, I totally do it. Uh -huh. This is as big as we can sell it because it's flammable. <laughs> then you have to have like a special truck bring it to the store. It's cool. Yeah. So, just so you can see the difference in what adding snow cap does. It's yum. Mm -hmm. It just, it changes, yeah, it changes all the rules because mm -hmm. now we're going from translucent layering to mm -hmm. adding a touch of opacity to it uh, and still keeping mm -hmm. that color. It's yeah. awesome. It's, I, know. I mean, is it No, this is still going to have your gloss finish. Yeah, so it's still your glossy paper, but it just changes the look of it. And that, that's what I was saying, you know, when we were talking about coming to the show and I did this, so like, would you want to do any other new colors? I'm like, you don't need any. Yeah, really. No, because this opens up. Yeah. yeah, I'm like adding white. It's like you just got 42 new colors yeah. just by adding white because now all your colors become something totally different than what you had.